Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace the battery in your possible project uh, Polaroid Lab. Uh, this particular one is the latest model but it supports the same in the original one. I'm not actually going to replace the battery in this guy, because, but I'm actually going to replace the battery in uh, one of the labs I'm converting. He already has the top attached for direct RB67. This is going to plan. So, but the process is also identical at this point. So, first thing we need to do, I'll point this down to the work table, is to remove the back cover of the lab. Use a Philips 00 screwdriver and have to remove these two screws here. Don't lose them. in a plastic container or anything else there like a medicine cap bottle medicine medicine bottle cap works the same way slide this out and slide out now notice there are these little hooks these little notches here when you put it back you have to go back on underneath this show to reassemble it and pull the little cable out from here it's a little harder on this guy because I already converted it and pull out the ribbon cable done remove the box or reassemble this it's easier with the lab because the cable is a lot looser on this side but for this converted one it's a little tighter anyway so why did I do this because after you do this you can completely detach the front of the lab and work in peace so the first thing you do is unhook it and on the side you first unhook so it's simply swinging in these, no these notches, these plastic notches are swinging in these hinges here. So you first unhook this guy, the one that's away from... No, you first unhook this guy that's the one that near the connector. Kind of use your thumb to push it out. There you go, it comes off. And it needs to be fully open for this to work. And then you hook this side here. See, it's up. I put this on the side. And that's how it looks like. So the batteries inside here, you see the original battery pack wrapped in Capton tape. May look or may not look the same. Some of the old packs have silver wrapping. Anyway, okay. And the next step is basically take the cover off so for that we need to remove these two screws again Philips 00, zero. some may be tight so use a small tip screw Philips screwdriver don't try this little big screwdriver because you're gonna strip the threads off come on loosen it use your fingers or a pair of tweezers safely put them away Don't lose them. They may be longer than the other screws. If they're longer, just remember these are long and the other ones are short. Okay. What do we do next? We slowly pull out, lay this flat and kind of slowly pull it out. And when you do that, just make sure that this little plastic wheel doesn't come out if it comes out it's not a tragedy but when you put it back on you're gonna notice it has a little flat side on the side it's a little hard to see here and that has to press a little switch so when you do it on put it back on just make sure it's assembled the same way right? so if you did this carefully it's not gonna come out of place okay 
So rotate it towards you. All right. And this is the battery. Did you see that you can just grab it actually as well. And you see how it's, its connector is plugged into the outside uh, socket here and the red is pointing towards the inside of the lab. Black out, red in. So I'm going to lay this down and using either pair of tweezers or your fingers, gently take it out. If you do that, you may actually take this protective cover off. And this is optional when you put it back on, but let's remove it off that. And the way we put it back on, you're gonna see it's asymmetrical. The, the slot, it's closer to one side than the other side. side. So you want the the shorter side to go towards the motor like that shorter side towards the motor just slowly put it back in there this is simply just a guide for the connector doesn't serve, serve any other purpose yeah short side towards the motor towards the charging port back on. All right. So now we have to put a new battery in. When you put a new battery in, you're gonna have to remember that the red connector goes towards the other connector and the rest and the black goes towards the outside. So I'm just gonna plug it in. When you do so, again, make sure that you kind of hold your finger for this because when you do so, when you reconnect the battery, your lab might move a little. Did not in this case. Just, right? And at this point, you can do a short test. I have a charger available. The light should come on. All right, unhook it. This means we, it detected the battery and it's charging something. All right, so when you place it back inside, you're gonna have to put your battery inside these little notches here. The one on this side. So you're gonna have to position it in such a way that you usually rotate it. battery should sit flush with this side here and you see there's plenty of room in there and don't worry if your cables kind of sit on the other side of the connectors and they're not in the way they're really far away from the rollers and the print comes here so they're not actually interfering with anything right, so it kind of looks like this so put this flat on the table surface again make sure this is all tight and now rotate it and I'm going to attempt to put this back in the front so just kind of slide it and when you do that you're going to notice actually before I do that let me show you the inside the inside of the this is the battery side and this is the motor side we see the holes for the charging port and the uh, charging LED anyway so the edge of the board on the motor side is to fit in here and the edge of the battery has to fit on the other side and you see there's another little notch here so the battery needs to basically sit between these two so we put it back on slide it on Try to get the motor right first and then use a pair of tweezers kind of push the battery in the slot and then what 
you want is lift this slightly so the little lip goes over the corresponding lip in the front of the valve and looks like that I'll show you iterative till it kind of looks like that how do you know it's all in well you can look at the charging led the charging led should protrude through this not all the way out but if it's visibly inside it's either that it's bent so you have to bend it back in place and kind of play with the tip of a pair of tweezers to rearrange it to come out or you did something here, the battery is not seated properly. So it's hard to describe in a video, but you kind of have to like fill it in and make sure it's going all the way. And the way you know you're in the right place is that if the screws on the back match the holes on the back, match the holes in here. So if you're having difficulty reattaching it, you did something wrong, so you have to fiddle again to make it to sit properly. So, so I think it's okay right now. So after it is done, you place this vertically. You take one of your black screws, the one you remove from here, push it in. And let's see if we did it right. Yay, I think it's going in. Don't over tighten it. And then the other side. I start with the screw on the side of same side as the connector. Usually it may work the other way, but and this may need a little wiggling because it's not pushed all the way to the wall. It's kind of sitting a little far away from the wall. Just wiggle a bit till you register the holes and then. I think it's back on. All right. Battery replaced. Nothing seems out of place. All right. Let's reattach this to the converted top or the impossible app. And when you reattach it, just remember that this side goes down, so it's like that. And you have to hook it first on the hinge away from the connector. You want to go there first. Right on. And on the one on the connector side, when you do the connector side, just make sure that the cable is kind of doesn't get caught inside there. It's a tragedy. We don't want that. We damage it, all right? Awesome, it clicks back in place, this closes properly. All right, so this is almost done. What we need to do right now, if you had a polar lab, um, there will be a cable sticking out pretty far out, so it, it's easy to reconnect at this point. Let me show you how it looks on a polar lab. Take the cover off. This is an unmodified one, I mean. You see, it will kind of look like this. So it's really easy to hook it back on. When you hook it back on, just make sure that the cable legs flat with the blue side up. Not, it's not twisted. And it just kind of push it back in. And now uh, reattach the switch to its proper place. And there's a slot in here you want to see properly. And, and reattach the back, lay down, but don't start from here, kind of lay down like that, there's a small gap in there, it's about, this protrudes out for like a few millimeters, push it down, 
and push it back on. It should. And this should assure that the notches, the plastic clips in the back cover kind of go underneath the corresponding notches in the inner workings of the lab. Again, I just showed you this on the lab, so I'll sh show you how it works on a modified lab. But let's say you're doing this on one of my lab, that, or lab you modify using a residue kit. Right, so, so the, con the, the part of the uh, eject box on my modified labs looks like this. So. What we need to do, reinsert this cable with the blue side up. And these are a pair of tweezers. Take this out of the way. With a pair of tweezers. To pull it out. It's gonna be a little. I don't have room. All right. Attach this and use this guy, it's a solid. All right, all right. The little sound is telling me that I made the connection properly, it's resetting. All right, and reattach the back cover again. When you put it back on, you leave a little gap here, push it in that and then we reattach the cover using the black screws that we took off during this stage the original the four lab screws one it's a uh, the packs I'm sending should be have some charge in them so, but I recommend the full charge before you try using a lab. So I'm re-sampling this little lab here. Let's see if it works. Amazing, having a lab on a new battery. All right, so let me reassemble this. So this concludes the replacement of the battery. And I'm gonna let it roll to see how I'm reassembling this lab that I already converted. So uh, this is four screws in the side cover. Oh, come on. It should be threaded carefully, push them in. step after I do this to fully charge the lab. So plug it in and wait for the light to go off. So for a fresh battery expect a good few hours of charging if it's discharged. These are new cells though and they kind of come with a lot of charge on them already so it doesn't wouldn't take may not take that long. It take up to an hour and the light would go off and then yes at this point you're fully charging and ready to shoot yeah just remember remove the dark side before you eject i don't have a good way of automating that yet no interlocks i may get there one day right Hopefully charge battery charge enough. It is a use a pack reloaded to use him. Done. Bye.